it's just the way that this whole thing started. It's a conversation between us. And uh, sorry that I keep giving Dang. <laughs> I'm gonna tear up here. Though to be fair, I think I'm like the only 37 year old out there who has an unironic appreciation of Skibbity Toy. Hey, me too! Maybe that's the problem. That's not a problem! Hey everyone, it's your friend Think Noodles, and welcome back to Think VX. But today we're gonna, well, we're gonna be experiencing the end of an era. Uh, Matt Pat is officially quitting game theory and saying goodbye to the internet and and speaking of <laughs> this thumbnail right here broke the internet he absolutely did with his goodbye video i saw that his goodbye internet video well obviously you can see 16 million views in six days uh it hit number one main trending which i'm not sure he's ever done before which i would say is absolutely the definition of going out on top so we're gonna watch the goodbye internet video and then I just saw that he uploaded a Garden of Ban Ban 6 game theory video, so we're gonna watch them both because with MatPat quitting YouTube, we started our channels around the same time. Oh, okay, well, he's got a few years on me. But still, I started in 2011, he started in 2009, and I also saw that uh, Jordan or, or Captain Sparkles was quitting his main channel, and it got me thinking, don't, don't worry, don't worry, I'm still here, guys. But uh, let, let's go ahead and jump in. It's not clickbait. On March okay. 9th, I will be hosting my last theory. Episode, March 9th. At which point, I'll be handing off the channels to someone else. All right, I can already tell like how uh, emotional this is for him without uh, even watching more than 10 seconds of it. I, I would be in the exact same state. I will be one day, guys. It's I can't, I'm not, not going to do this forever one day. I'm going to be making this very same video and I'm going to be just as emotional as his, him, but not anytime soon. I'm still, I still got more in me, guys. Yep. There it is. That's it. Send tweet. We're all done here. That's all you need to know, right? Oh, uh, wow. I mean, I'd like to hear Forgive me, by the why. way, if I, uh, I'm a little bit more disorganized than usual. Uh, normally, I would want to script out something like this pretty precisely. But with an announcement like this, I wanted to bring it nah. back to just us. There, there's no one else in the room. There's no teleprompters. There's no nothing. It's just the way that this whole thing started. It's a conversation between us. And uh, sorry that I keep getting Dang. emotional about this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tear up here. To, Jeez. It's a big deal. You know, like, if you think about it, this channel is Steph and my first child, really. Before we had Ollie, before we had Skip, Catbat, like... It was this. This was our baby. This channel has been going for 13 years. I think in total it's, it's somewhere around like 1,200 theories. And um, only half of those are FNAF. Shocking. <laughs> I know we actually did stuff that wasn't FNAF related. But this has been a literal third of my life. And I'm going to miss you. Dang. I value what we have here. I value this conversation, this openness, this relationship that we share. And I'm sad that I won't be able to see you every week. Which then I guess prompts the question of like, why? Why yes. am I doing this now? Here why am I making yeah. this announcement today? Why am I walking away from the channels? Well, to be honest, um, it was it's Tom time. Scott. You can blame Tom oh. Scott. Tom just did his farewell video and I'm like, oh, well, he was able to do it. I want to be able to fly away in a helicopter. <laughs> Obviously, that's not no, it. No, um, I think this is something really, my years in the making. For making this announcement today is probably largely the same as Tom's reasons, or Seth Everman's, or Captain Sparkles. Mm -hmm. or yeah, there. See, that's Stampy what I was talking about. Heads. Like, there's a lot of these videos that are oh, coming yeah, out. Stampy, these days, that's right. And there's going to be a lot I mean, more I remember, happening throughout this year. Steph I'd and forgotten. I have known this video would be coming for the last three years. Yeah, see, we years sure in the making. Yeah, necessarily going to be today. We didn't know exactly when it would fall, but we knew it was going to happen eventually. That's I mean, why it has over to, the last couple right? of years, we've like, been staffing up so much. That's why we partnered with a larger company to help run the channels. That's why we've been spending so much time outside of this box, training up the team to make the best videos that they can. Because we knew that we couldn't do this forever. We knew that, honestly, we didn't want to do this forever. For as much as I love you, and I love overthinking things, and I love theorizing, 
I don't love late nights. I don't love the fact that Steph and I have been work first for over a decade. So just to go back to what he said there, well, the, first of all, work first, like that is YouTube, uh, running a successful channel. So many people think that it's really easy, like especially a gaming channel. You play, so, you play a game for a little bit, you record it, you upload it, and that, that's it. You, you play for 20 minutes and upload a 20-minute video, and that's your work for the day. And it really is so, so, so much more running a successful channel. As you saw his team there, I have a t similar size team, I have probably 10 to 12 people that work for me that help me run this channel. Uh, yet, it is always work first. Anytime anything happens, the first thing I think of is, how does that affect production? My wife, uh, we were away this weekend, and my wife was like, hey, I, I was thinking we would actually just stay like four more days, and I'm like, I would love to, but I can't. I have videos to make, and I didn't plan for that. If we'd done it before leaving, maybe. But and and, and that I, I get what he's saying. That sucks. I can't call into work and be like, "Hey, guys, I, I I'm staying a little longer. Uh, can so and so cover me?" That's just that can't happen, and 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 it wouldn't happen or couldn't happen on his channel either. Now, uh, the other thing that he said was he loves overthinking things and theorizing and stuff. So I met, and and this is like when. <laughs> Not that he's dying or anything, not that he died, but he's, he's leaving his channel. But when, when, when someone dies, they always like post a picture and they're like, yo, I, this was shout out to the time I met so-and-so. They were so gracious. And that's kind of what this is. But this tells, uh, this validates what he just said. I met Matt Pat uh, at a creator summit um, and hung out with uh, him and actually, coincidentally, uh, Jordan or Captain Sparkles for most of the creator summit. And during that summit, like... There's always a celebrity speaker at these. Um, it's been Will Smith at one I went to, uh, and I can't, I'm trying to remember the other one. But anyway, this one, uh, and they always keep it secret. Like, oh, we don't know who it is, and everyone speculates, right? You want to know who knew? This guy. Yeah, Matt Patton knew somehow, as he knows so many things, and. <laughs> He even like, so he was like, oh yeah, you know, and he was, he's being coy about it. And, uh, and I was like, who is it? Who is it? And he's like, look, I'll just, I'll just say, you know, you might have a tough time keeping up with her. And I was like, huh, <laughs> what are you talking about? And he's like, uh, you'll see. And so when it came out, it was, uh, Kris Jenner, uh, the matriarch of the Kardashian family and keeping up with the Kardashians. And. This guy, man, he knew, he made it like, he, he made it so like there was a little mystery to solve in it and, and this like persona online is not just a, a character. MadPat is MadPat, it is genuine and that is how he is in all aspects. Uh, even doing game theory or celebrity theory or summit theory uh, or YouTube theory at, at the creator summit when we're just supposed to be enjoying ourselves. This guy's still working. Where anyway. I'm sitting down at dinner with my best friend and we're talking about business logistics. Mm -hmm. Or we're talking Been about there. animatronic toes. I miss the days <laughs> where I could just sit down on the couch with her and play video games and it's not for content. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or I'm playing a game and I'm not thinking about what theories are going to come See? out. See? There he is. The, like He really does so that's, think about that's this constantly. And is, I bet even when he's right not there. working on the channel, uh, but he's still going to think about the it. The internet's changing. My life has changed oh, yeah. in the last sure. 15 years. I, I mentioned Dolly before. He's the coolest little dude, and he's getting older by the minute. And I watch him, and he is so much fun, and he is so much smarter than I was when I was his age. He also probably knows the FNAF lore better than I do, which Whoa, is a problem that I should great. probably address at some point. <laughs> but honestly, I want to be able to spend more time with him. Another sad fact of the matter is, is I'm getting older. I'm 37 now. I'm older than him. <laughs> the other day, <laughs> Quite I actually had to in. Google my own age. Yep. And you know that Been when there you have too. to start like, doing math in your head to calculate how old you are, you are over the hill, my friends. Though to be fair, to my credit, I think I'm like the only 37-year-old out there who has an unironic appreciation of skibbity toilet. Hey, me again, too! Maybe that's the problem, right? <laughs> like, that's not a problem. Maybe that's not a good thing. And honestly, because... This is all about us being honest. There is a mm. bit of a selfish side to this. When you think about it, there's only really two ways to step away from a YouTube channel. You either yeah. just decide the day that you stop uploading and you're like, I'm done. Or you just keep uploading videos from now until the heat death of the universe 
and <laughs> watch as your relevance slowly dies or your passion slowly dies. And I, for me and my journey wouldn't, in this place, I always wanted to go out on a high note. And when oh, you well, he did. He got uh, number one trending. But I would think that game theory has only become more and more popular as time has gone on. Like, I don't think that he's losing relevance at all. I think he's more relevant than ever. Uh, but I do get the going out on a high note when you're a relevant peak. Stop but, and look at yeah. the last year. This has been the best year in the theorist lifespan. There you go. Ever. Like, no joke. Yeah. It no, is seriously. our highest view year. Dang, uh, almost two billion we views. Style theory and immediately put our foothold in a brand new space. And that oh, I didn't... took off, and now we're one of the top. What is that, like Mythbusters? I've never watched YouTube. Style and Theory. That kind of completes the trifecta of hey, we now have a top channel in four different verticals that are completely Jeez. different. And no other YouTuber really has ever been able to do it to that scale. That's amazing. This is also the year where I was able to meet you guys at our Broadway show. I was able to play at the PGA and show that, <laughs> hey, YouTubers aren't particularly good at golf, but they can make your event relevant for like a couple of minutes. This is also the year that I got to host the Streamy Awards and it wasn't cringe. Uh, I mean, to be fair, the Streamy Awards are always a little bit cringe, okay. but uh, it, was, it was the right amount of cringe. When I pull up videos of all my favorite creators, and I watch them, and all of a sudden I start hearing people just casually dropping, that's just a theory. Oh, a theory, yeah, I've probably done theory. that. Now, this is just a theory, people. At the end of the day, it's just a game theory. That's just <laughs> a theory. A uh, free bird okay, theory. Yeah. Also a lot of lore, so if you're a big theory head, proceed at your own risk. I did not know about this theory. Or that's a theory. A <laughs> that right there, yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, it is. That's the note that I want to leave. A catchphrase that everyone says. That's right amazing. Time. All of those reasons coming together, hmm. saying, "Hey, this is the moment," and it's hard to say. Yeah. Because change is scary. Change is hard. Absolutely. But sometimes the right decision isn't the easy decision. The, the <laughs> easy decision would just be to Keep carry going. on doing yeah. this and do FNAF Part Three Hundred Thirty Two, <laughs> but that wouldn't be the right decision. I think the best way to explain it is with a video game analogy. Feels appropriate, okay. right? Whoa, it's game theory. Ha! Did it. Uh, Check the game part of it off. But the way I like to think about it is Earthbound. I think I've made it pretty clear over the years that that is, without question, my favorite game of all time. Sansa's Nest, all that, you're all familiar with that. But what you might not be familiar with at this point is how the game ends. At the end of Earthbound, after you save the world, everything opens up to you. You can revisit every single location that you've been to. You can talk to every NPC that you met on your journey. And it's this incredible moment as a gamer. You see just how many lives you have changed. been impacted yeah. thanks to your journey. And then after spending as much time as you want talking to all those people, you end up back home. You go back to where it all began, where you were just a kid waking up in bed and starting your adventure. And even though your mom's there and your dog's there and your weird telephone dad's there, <laughs> It feels different somehow. Like, sure, this is still a place of love and acceptance and comfort and security, but you just don't quite fit anymore. Because you just traveled the world. You made all these new friends. You are different. You grew up. Yeah. And your relationship to this place grows up. It evolves. In case you couldn't tell, I'm Ness, which uh, I guess would <laughs> yeah. also mean that I'm also Sans, uh -huh. <laughs> but I was also Ness in the FNAF movie, which just opens up all sorts of weird canon. Slap a thumbnail on that one. So <laughs> anyway, there you have it. That is why I'm leaving. I hope you can understand. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I totally get it. And I understand the reasons and I can empathize with him, sympathize. I'm, I never know which word to use, uh, but I do understand. I think his video was, uh, I mean, being number one trending was very well received and I wish him well uh, in his future endeavors. I'm sure he'll be very successful and uh, hopefully uh, continue to be happy and, and, and even happier and more satisfied with, uh, with the life that he lives and has chosen to live. It is a brave, brave choice that uh, I, even after 13 years myself, uh, am unable to make it this time. So congrats, man. Oh, look at this. Yep, Nine friend. theories remain. <laughs> Okay, okay, uh, nine, then obviously that's nine theories uh, with Matt Pat as the host uh, before they move it on to uh, someone else. And look at that, 41 on trending. Wow, wow, they got Garten of Band Band 6, 41 on trending. GG's. All right, let's see what you got. 
18 minutes is yep, a friends, lot of theory for things. games. The first video I'm doing is my final round of host on this channel. <laughs> yeah. And Garden of effing Ban Ban. <laughs> sort of darkest timeline are we operating off of here? <laughs> No, 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 stop it. No, if I what, have nine what, theories what? left before I hand things Wait, over you're to not Tom, doing it? we are bringing back the classic intro. Oh, dang, look at this. Yes. <laughs> See, but the, you know what's interesting about this? It's, it's allowing him, I mean, this with this announcement. Ah, that's the stuff. Hello, Internet. Welcome uh, to, to Game To be more Theory, creative. Where in just a you couple know, of weeks, I love I'm going to be unburdened of Ban Ban. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, this one's your problem now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I should have seen this coming. Though, to be fair, Ban Oh, Ban nice. He's working the mitt. Problem. At this Dude's point, smart. it's kind of inescapable. It exploded onto the scene in such a big way last year that it was labeled as one of YouTube's top 10 trends of 2023. Was it really? Right alongside Peaches from the Mario movies. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom You're kidding. and Grimace Shake. Are I did not realize God, that. You just got the month no, wrong. Not okay. This is it's from a different okay. month. Okay, the the answer for this round is Garden of Ban Ban. And yet here we stand at the one year anniversary of the first Garden of Ban Ban <sighs> game with the that. latest installment just released. How I guess did we're just they manage talk that? About it until Poppy comes out, which will probably be a lot better. After what feels like an eternity for this franchise, well, let me check my notes. Three months. Four months. The yeah. fifth installment <laughs> of this game series dropped. And Naturally and titled Number Garden seven. Ban Ban 6. six. And yeah. relative and then... to the rest of the series, episode 6 is pretty tame. Episode 4 ended with a jester named Bitter Giggle making Queen yeah. Bouncelia laugh, causing her giant kangaroo pouch to erupt into a <laughs> sky beam which released the naughty ones. Episode 6 deals with the fallout of all those words I just said, where we have to face the leader of the naughty <laughs> ones, so Sir like Dadadu, using sarcastic. his mind control powers to take over the other mascots of the kindergarten. Oh, and we also get hit by a bus several <laughs> times. Wasn't this a game about looking for our lost kid in a kindergarten? Whatever happened to that? But here's kind the of thing. Forgot, for as much yeah. as I joke about this game being lol so random, the Euphoric Brothers are smart. As we talked about in a previous yeah, theory, are. skipping the fifth installment was actually a big brain move on their part in both the marketing hmm. and storytelling department. Okay. And it showed me that there's actual thought and attention put into the way oh, that this thing is being structured. I don't and it was that, that realization is, that got me to go back and rethink all the idea. insane things that this game throws I can't, I still can't figure out all the ridiculous over-the-top what the heck were they thinking moments in this game, none can compare to the dream sequences that we've been given <laughs> since chapter three. Oh! <laughs> choo choo Charles. <laughs> I was choo dying too. Choo Charles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these insane fever dreams of storytelling, talking about beaches and featuring cameos from other indie franchises, these seem to have more method to their madness than any of us gave them credit for. I mean, when the Euphoric Brothers' main goal seems to be pumping out as many games as possible as quickly as possible, it's weird for them to purposely spend a lot of time putting these things into the games just for the lols, which means that they have to be important for some reason. I don't know right? about so Charles, what are man. these dream sequences? Really, okay, yeah, why the... are we being shown them? And can they yeah, potentially okay. reveal the solution to the kindergarten's largest mystery? Which I believe is... the answer is yes. And yes. today, I'm gonna prove it to you. So before we figure out what exactly is going on here, we first need to remember what exactly these things are. In every instance, we're shown these dreams by the giant jellyfish, Stinger Flynn. Yeah. This guy's been a bit of a question mark the entire series. Is he good? Is he bad? It's not exactly clear. Yeah, when not. we first meet him in chapter three, he basically tells us to give up on our quest to find our lost child because he's cooked up a scheme to get him and all the other children out of the facility safely. He tells mm -hmm. us he's gonna show us something that's gonna totally convince us to stop looking for our kid and instead he takes us into the first <laughs> the dream beach. sequence where we're on a yeah. deserted island alongside him talking about his lack of a tan. Don't forget Zolpheus. I never had actual sunrays <laughs> touch my skin. Can you imagine that? And I yearn for the day that they finally do. He then goes on to complain about his hyperintelligence and talk about how he yearns to be just a normal jellyfish. Uh, sorry, what, what does any of this have to do with my missing kid? Before we leave though, he does make one thing clear. Of course. None of this is real, but it all could be. Okay, well, so a dream. let's interpret yeah. what's going on with this first dream. Okay. This place, this beach, it isn't mm -hmm. real. It's where he wishes to be and where he was destined to be when he was just a bunch of jellyfish DNA. That right there well, might seem obvious, yeah. but I don't know, man. I, mean, I don't end expect up on anyone the beach, to retain but more dead information about this game, let alone but... symbolically dissect what the glowing orange monotone jellyfish is saying during his underground dream sequence monologue <laughs> as a giant sock puppet looms in the distance. <laughs> this is the first giant dream, and it's showing us what freedom looks like to Flynn. Besides him saying that he wants to escape and then show 
showing us the beach that he wants to be real, we also see him standing next to a car. The car yep. has always been a representation of freedom, especially when you're talking about kids. Finally getting to drive yourself wherever you wanted, okay. whenever you wanted, unrestrained by parents. A Got car it. equals freedom. Okay. And Stinger Flynn, in his dream, drove yep, himself this one. to yep, this beach. Yep, yep. He wants to take control of his destiny and find his personal freedom. Easy. Nothing too difficult to parse in this one. Still <laughs> not entirely sure how it applies to my missing kid, but uh, we'll move on. In future dreams, Stinger Flynn isn't the only one who's trying to escape. For the second dream, we've got Ban Ban, Opila Bird, Nab Nab, and Captain Fiddles all alongside him going Th but to this the is, you know, this is Garden Ban Ban 6, but we're, okay, I, I get it. We're, we're, we're like going a back. for this okay. whole okay. kindergarten okay. facility, right? A barren wasteland with no mm -hmm. real sense of direction, and most importantly, no end in sight. It's also worth noting in this one that Stinger Flynn is the only one to truly be aware of the freedom that could await them. So, Stinger, when are we arriving at this place called... Beach. Notice that Ban Ban uses quotations around the word beach here never because seen one. he doesn't understand it. He doesn't yeah. know what freedom truly is. Freedom isn't his goal, but, you know, he's more than willing to go along, go along. for the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead, Stinger Flynn is the driver. He's the one leading the charge. He's the one literally and figuratively driving them all towards freedom. There's uh, just one problem with that. Stinger gets uh, lost. Bad driver. <laughs> doesn't actually have any idea where Crashes. his speech is. I believe we are lost. We've been going in circles for hours. Despite wanting freedom and saying he has a plan to get everyone out of the facility, Stinger Flynn is clueless. He has no idea how to reach his end goal. He's just stuck in the purgatory alongside everyone else. And this is where things begin to fall apart. Flynn crashes the car, yep. and as we see in the next dream sequence, the group end up sitting right. around the wreckage, sharing whatever food they have left. Oh, and uh, Zolfius is here now, just looming out in the background. He's just standing there. <laughs> In this scene, we see how desperate the group is getting, specifically Stinger Flynn. We each have our plans and goals, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. He's basically ready to give up. Doom that is, room, until dude. a surprise guest shows up. Choo-choo oh, Charles! <laughs> and while the Charles cameo itself feels unbelievably random, the actions that the other characters take, they don't. Stinger decides to capture a rescued Bam Bam. Yep. Nab Nab, meanwhile, confronts the train head-on to protect everyone. This is actually a series of events that we see repeat again in the dream sequence from Chapter 6. We see the crew really? all waiting for a bus okay, to take yeah. him to the beach, only for Captain Fiddles to be kidnapped by a different bus. Nab Nab no. tries to go after him and is hit oh, by a third bus, yeah. leaving the rest I... of the gang stranded, only for us to then be hit by, by a fourth, fourth bus. bus. <laughs> What's important to note in this bizarre sequence is <sighs> Nab Nab's actions. That's in true. both dreams, he runs in and tries to protect the other mascots. Okay. And what do we see at the end of Chapter 6? Oh, Bam Bam that is right. The hands of he does. Sir Dadadu and Nab Nab stepping in he, to protect yeah, them Yeah, man, he well, goes I wild. He stepped in. If I'm being thorough, I would say that he was injected with the chemical Jivanium and yeeted yep. away, at which point he transforms <laughs> into a giant Dark Souls boss and tears the naughty ones away, only to then lose and fall under the group yep. mind control spell. So really, all of that is what we saw in the dream sequence coming true. Nab Nab stepping in to help, but ultimately getting hurt hmm. in the process. And you see, this is where the pieces started to click into place for me. If Nab Nab's huh. fate from the dream came true, what other clues can we get from these things? Well, throughout the game, we've been collecting case reports full of lore. Yep, lots, lore that tells us about lots. the experiments done to create these living mascots. Almost all of them end up with a very specific yep, goal in mind. Is the subject ready yeah, and always no. This presentation isn't a presentation for stockholders or investors. Rather, it's a presentation With to parents zoo? and children. The oh. fateful Bring a Friend Day, where the kindergarten ball okay. pit collapses into the depths under the ah. weight of the visitors. Most cases that we read about have been deemed not ready for presentation. Right. However, there's one experiment that was considered enough of a success. What? I don't remember the this. Parents, the Captain child monkey. Fiddles, the one who oh. was stolen into the bus. These dreams Ooh. actually mean something. According to his case update report, while the captain is ready. capable of comprehensible speech, he showed exceptional stamina. He could perform simple mathematical operations, but most importantly of all, he imitated the behavior yeah. of a very obedient toddler. He was Which the none best of the others that the did. scientists had to offer. And so, as we see in one of the secret VHS tapes, oh, yeah. Captain Fiddles was presented to the children on Bring a Friend Day, <sighs> which means that he had to be separated from the rest of the gang. So just that's like when they the took dream. him Think from them. all the imagery that we're seeing in this Chapter 6 dream. We see Captain what? Fiddles get kidnapped by I a I really boss. thought everything was random, but this starts to make sense. Sense. Than a bus, public transportation is a symbol of authority and control. Uh -huh. It's a representation of the kindergarten staff, the scientists, the system that these mascots find themselves trapped in. When they couldn't find freedom on their own, when they got lost and crashed their car, they instead had to begin playing along with the scientists and their experiments. If they did as they were told, maybe they would have a chance to escape, to finally reach that freedom, only for them to constantly be told that they weren't ready for presentation. But Captain Fiddles, he was. And so without warning, he suddenly ripped away from 
from the rest. This also explains why we've only ever seen Zulfius from a distance. In our previous mm. theory, I spoke about how two scientists working at the facility created this big worm Zulfius in a failed attempt to use a real Ugh. kid to create the perfect child. A child that they would never be able to have naturally. But when the experiment was over, his face was deformed. His body didn't come together correctly. Like Voldemort. And so he was relegated to becoming one of the rejected mascots alongside Sir Dadadu and Bitter Giggle. In fact, that's exactly what we see in the teaser for Ban Ban Chapter 7. A mural of Zulfius alongside these weird hybrid reject characters. These are the ones <laughs> that are marked as like, permanently yeah. not ready for presentation. The ones yeah. that we learn through a note in Chapter 6 are planning a rebellion against the scientists. But Zulfius is in that first dream sequence with Stinger Flynn. Apparently yeah. all he wants is freedom. To be with other children. To be accepted. Mm. But he knows that he can't be. He is the reject. So he just keeps his distance. Watching and hoping that maybe he can follow him to freedom. But never really feeling comfortable enough to really get to know anyone else. So the big question now is, why is Stinger Flynn showing us this? And also, why do we just get hit by a bus? <laughs> well, remember, in the game, we're playing as a parent that's trying to recover our lost yes, child. And yet, right. at every turn, Stinger Flynn is quick to remind us that we're making a bad decision that we should probably And he's go gonna home. take care of it, yeah. I wanted to let you know that this is all happening because of you. I would be free of my shackles. And everyone you yeah, heard... I would, yeah, he wants to be free again, right there. Because of your foolish decisions, we are even less likely now to ever get back to the children. Our stubbornness, our ceaseless quest to find our child, it's hurting everyone around us. And in Stinger's mind, will ultimately be futile. It's the exact same thing that we're seeing in the dream sequences. Stinger Flynn has a goal of freedom that he's relentlessly pursuing, and it looks like he's hurting his, his friends. Ban Ban's in trouble. They're getting kidnapped. They're getting hit by buses. It's also <laughs> clear that trying to recover... Oh my gosh, that is a terrifying Captain Phillips. Gets nab -nab injured. Also Apparently, terrifying Nab Nab. try to recover others in this world, are ultimately struck down. Basically, we're on a collision course with ourselves. We're destroying everyone and everything around us in this relentless pursuit of this one thing, hence why this bus hits us at the end of the dream. The dream also shows us the evolution of Ban Ban and Stinger Flynn's relationship. Throughout the series, it's clear that Ban Ban and Stinger aren't exactly friends. In fact, during Chapter 3, Stinger Flynn gets mad at us for even working with Ban Ban to find our missing kid. But as Flynn yeah. keeps showing us more and more of these visions of past events, it's clear that he and Ban Ban used, used to, to be yeah, friends. Exactly. At least friendly enough for Flynn to have brought Ban Ban along on his little beach. escape plan in yeah. the first place. But as things get worse and worse, we see the deterioration there, of but... their relationship. They are yeah. arguing non-stop. You had it's one true. job and you messed that up somehow. That's if true! If Josh was here, he would have loved those vegetables. I am pretty content that he's not gracing us with his irritating presence. Why do you hate him so much? It gets so yeah. bad that Ban Ban decides that he doesn't even want the freedom that Flynn is offering anymore. What are we even doing all of this? I don't want to go to the beach anymore. I just want to go back. And to really nail home this connection, the Euphoric Brothers had a song commissioned specifically for the Dream Car sequence. What a song the name titled of it? Rivals. In that song's music video, created by the nerdcore channel Rocket Music, the titular rivals are none other than Flynn and, and Ban, Ban Ban. A song that Ban Ban seems to really like. That's what I'm talking about. The I lyrics never the caught song that. seem to be pointing at the moment that their relationship truly began to fall apart. In it, we have lyrics like, Don't tell me I got time for an eye for an eye. Don't take another life from me. Considering the song Ooh. is from the perspective of Ban Ban, it would seem that Stinger Flynn took a life from him. But what life is that? What could that be mm -hmm. meaning? Well, mm -hmm. it's important to remember that most of the monsters in this game are a mix of human genome and Jyvanium. For Ban yep. Ban, we know his human genome came from Dr. Uthman, Uthman. Adam, yep. the head researcher at Ban Ban's kindergarten. Yep. This is also the scientist who, alongside Dr. Weverly Mason, tried to create the child that they would never be able oh, to have, baby. only for it to turn into a monster. Meanwhile, Stinger Flynn, we still don't know much about, honestly. We don't know who his human genome donor True. was. We don't know what they did. What we do know is that though, according right? to this little kid drawing found in chapter 2, Stinger helped to save kids from a from rampaging Ban Ban on the loose during Bring yeah. Your Friend Day. So really, this line about stolen lives can boil down to one of three things. One, Stinger Flynn was the human who put Uthman Adam's genome into Ban Ban in the first place, stealing his human life and he's mad about so. it. Option no. two is that Stinger stole or harmed the child that Uthman created. And then there's option number three. On Bring a Friend Day, we know Ban Ban went on a rampage. We also see hints of this in Chapter 5's preview images. Maybe Stinger, by saving that group of kids for his own unclear and suspicious motivations, literally took those lives away from Ban Ban. Oh, Regardless the I reason, like that I suspect theory. that the yeah. next few chapters are going to give us some more Wait, 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 Garden of Ban Ban, hey, wait, 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 does he know something we don't? What's this? <laughs> I mean, this is the, this is the official image for Seven, and 
he's already assuming it's going to be eight instead of back to five before seven. Wait, what? No, seven, then five, then eight. But it's got the, the, the really old, creepy Captain Fiddles who's got like wrinkles and stuff. That would be bizarre. And leading to the realization that Ban Ban, the mascot that we oh, thought we like could this trust, was the one that caused the ball pit to collapse on Bring a Friend Day. That he was the one that caused our mm. child to disappear and sent us into the abyss trying to find them. But you know what? That's not the only mystery that we have left. During the huh? dream cutscenes, whose perspective are we playing through? Ooh. Naturally, you might assume that we're still in the us, perspective the of the player that but we're playing we throughout the rest be. of the game. Or we maybe we're be. not any character at all. That we're just some random floating camera observing That's these true. things happening. But yeah, it I think that make a whole lot of sense within no. the scenes themselves. I guess First not off, because Ban Ban Stinger yeah, we're sitting the like they are. talk directly to our character. Hey yeah. you. You're finally awake. You oh, sure are a sleepy fellow. Agreed. Morning, sleepy fellow. We are a part Always of asleep. These We're watching this from the perspective oh. of someone in the gang. So then, who? who are we? My first thought was that perhaps we're Jumbo Josh, but I was able to rule no, that out. No, because he said we weren't with him. From the yeah. Campfire dream. yeah, yeah, I knew Man. that part. Yeah. If Jumbo Josh was here, he would have loved those vegetables. The next possibility was Bambolina, but that one was also quickly shot down. Finally, oh, you're yeah. breaking up. I was getting really bored, and that fellow well, over there isn't much of a talker. If Bambolina I don't know about that, because this right here, we got knocked out, and then we actually play in this scene. This isn't a dream scene. Mm, I don't know, well, man. It's really part of Stinger Flynn's escape crew that you would obviously know that Nab Nab is not a talker. Ban Ban wouldn't be needing to yeah. give her this sort of information, which means that whoever okay. we are, we're someone new. We're someone who doesn't know this group all that well, and that's shockingly rare to come by. I mean, almost all the characters that we've met so far have known yeah. each other, or at least have known about each other in some form. Toadster in Chapter 4 even has a poster of every character, including the Chapter yeah, 7 Syringian. character Syringian, who we still haven't met in the games yet. Everyone knows everyone, except True. for maybe one. There is one character that has been kept a secret this whole time. The what? one we also suspect was that Bring a Friend Day with Ban Ban. The is it Chris child. Jenner? <laughs> this child was purposely just... kept hidden, not just from the experiments, Kidding. but from everyone. Quote from one of the lore documents. We have to turn it back around if we want our little secret down in the basement to stay a secret. Eventually, the child was thrown into the mix with the other mascots because a follow-up note says, not to mention how dangerous it is to keep them around all those other monstrosities. Yeah. This child is been with Ban Ban and his crew for a while, which is why it makes sense for him to be traveling with the rest of the group in these dream sequences. And this then seems to point to the crux of this whole game franchise. At but its then... core, it isn't about purple kangaroos or spider blobs <laughs> or pancreases, pancreas, <laughs> whatever the yeah, plural is. Know. It's about family. The love of two scientists desperate for a child. The love of but one that parent turns into Zolfius. And, and Zolfius it's about the is tragedy in those that scenes, comes right? when you're separated from those hmm. children. Stinger Flynn potentially takes away Ban Ban's kid on Bring a Friend Day, sending him into a rampage. This then prompts the overstuffed ball pit to collapse, leading to the catastrophic situation in which our character finds herself. So laugh all you want about the weird, veiny mascots with dumb names and stiff animations. <laughs> At its core, this is a human story told through weird, esoteric dream sequences, poorly written text documents, and monotone <laughs> monologues. But if you manage to get through all of that and the strange uh -huh. and often boring gameplay, underneath you have something beautiful. Wow. Or... You know, maybe not beautiful, but at the very least, it's interesting. Or if not interesting, at the very least, you have yourself a theory. A game <laughs> Oh, my God. Thanks for watching. <laughs> wow. Okay. So it's really kind of funny there at the end. He, like, goes through all of it, and he's like, yeah, but everything in this game kind of sucks. <laughs> Anyway, I enjoy the games. I I do. Uh, he definitely raised some questions in my mind uh, when I'm playing uh, Garden of Ban Ban Seven because I obviously will. I will be thinking of really closely in the dream sequences. I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to those because. I think he's right. I think the dream sequences are very important and deliberate and ultimately uh, what is going to give us the most clues to what is actually going on at Garden of Ban Ban. Now, if you guys enjoyed my reaction, make sure to click the like button also because I'm not retiring yet. <laughs> Uh, but uh, congratulations to Matt Pat on making that decision and, and taking the next step in your life. It's, I'm sure it's going to be a tough transition, but it's going to be amazing. And I, I'm sure that uh, two, three, four years from now, uh, you'll be so glad that you made that decision when you did. Proud of you, man. I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching. And of course, new line.